we did a uh, five days men retreat in Illinois, and uh, we had two services around the campfire, and uh, I think a total of five men raised their hand to give their life to Jesus uh, by the campfire, so thank God for that. And then Sunday, we preached at the church there on Sunday, and uh, we, we, uh, it, we had an altar full. I don't know how many come up to the altar, but uh, I thank God for all of them that, that gave their heart to Jesus. How I many knows that's what it's about? I mean, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Hey, before we get started, I want to say, uh, take time between now and Sunday uh, to pray, uh, fast, uh, repent. For Sunday, we're going to do a, a foot washing service and a communion service. So Sunday's going to be very special. So in between now and Sunday, uh, I would that you take time. Now listen, if you got some nasty feet, I won't look at nobody. <laughs> Chris, I'm going outside. <laughs> no, but but it's very, very uh, special. If you've never been uh, in a service like that, you'll love it. Uh, and it's just an intimate time with, with you and God. So Sunday, we're going to do communion and a foot washing service. So in between now and Sunday, take time, repent, pray, fast when you can, uh, and, and we'll draw up and wash your feet Sunday before you come to church. Amen. Sand them down. Sand them down. Hey, if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10. Amen. Uh, as you're turning, Candy's going to play his song, and uh, I think it has the lyrics if I pick the right one. If you don't never heard this song, please listen to the chorus. And we're going to take time to just worship, uh, extend the worship just a little longer. Uh, sound like somebody wrecked. You doing youth, Sherry? Okay. At this time, all the youth that wants to, they're going to do youth in the back. For anybody that wants to come. Wants to go. Everybody but Keith. Sit back down, Keith. Uh, Mark chapter 10. <laughs> What's wrong with you girls? They're okay. As, as the kids is dismissing, y'all pray for Angel, my wife. Her and uh, my, my oldest girl, Carly, she's sick. So Angel, that's where she's at tonight. So y'all remember them. Sure, you shut that door behind you. Taylor's coming. Slowly. She's old. Amen. The youth leaves and the church is empty. I'll stay gone for a week and Cliff runs everybody out. Cliff, <laughs> Never mind. Oh, okay. Kenny. <laughs> she just oh, called you out. <laughs> can y'all give, give Cliff and Stacy a hand clap for everything they do? Amen. Amen. So anyways, we're going to extend the worship. Get your minds right. Uh, please listen to the words of this song. And if you've never heard it, please download it. You'll love it. The chorus absolutely just touches me every time I hear it. Uh, and then, then we'll get into the message. Stand to the feet during this, this last song if you're able to.
that from your heart we, we just want to know him more amen uh, so Kenny that's the new song we're going to try to learn <laughs> I love it so father we come before you in the name of Jesus Lord and father before we dive deep into your word God short message but somewhat deep father not not too deep but 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 father I pray God that you would, would begin to break up the ground break up till up the ground God Till up the ground, God, of their hearts, of their, their spirit this night, God. Till their soulless realm up. Get things ready, Father, and in alignment with your word, God, that follow this word. That it will not fall on, on, on a hard place, God, but that the seed would be sown this night. The good seed would be sown, God, into good soil, God. And I pray, just like the tiller, God, uh, the gardener, when he takes the tiller, Father, and tills up the, the dirt, I pray this night, God, right now as we're praying, that we soften up our spirit. We soften up that dirt on the inside of us, God. We begin to till the, the ground up, God, and that it be ready, Father, for the seed that's getting planted tonight. I pray, Father, for that, that you would anoint their ears, God, to hear exactly what it is your spirit's saying to the church this night, Father, that, that God, we're not up here pretending like we're something big and uh, that we're not, God, but, Lord, we're just humbled servants, God, preaching your word, teaching to the best of our knowledge, God, to people, making disciples, Father, and, and, and to the best of our ability, God, setting the captives free. And I pray tonight, God, that you would anoint my lips, anoint this message, God, uh, for such a time as this, God, that you would prepare us for what's to come. Prepare us, God, uh, that we would learn to posture and get ready, God, for the battle. And I pray, Father, this night, that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, God, that's lost and undone, that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, God, that before they leave, they would make that life-changing decision. That, God, they've come to the right place. That they don't have to search no more. Uh, they don't have to search any farther, God, because you're here. Your, your spirit's here, God. Your blood uh, is still wet today and it's still active today like it was several years ago, God. We thank you for that, God. For, Father, you said if we'd be just enough to ask you, you'd be just enough to forgive us. And we thank you, God, that we can come to you with a broken and a contrite spirit, God. And in no wise will you cast us out. We thank you, God, that we can come to you this night and say, Father, I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? Have mercy on me, a sinner. Save me this day, Father. I confess you out of my mouth. I pray, God, if there's anybody that they, Father, would not leave here lost, but that they would find you before they leave. I praise you, Father, and I thank you. And God, we just love you. All over this house, we love you, God. We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, God. We love you, and we love each other. And we give you praise. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen. Mark chapter 10, uh, starting about the 46th verse. Y'all forgive me because I typed this up. In, in there and, and I could not get it to print so I took a picture of it and I got it zoomed up and it's it's kind of glared and stuff but but that's okay uh, Mark chapter 10 verse 42 46 Mark 10 42 46 you're right Mark 10 42 time out retry Candy's back like what do I do <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows it's okay to smile. Yes. Bunch of prunes. I'm joking. You're not prunes. You're good looking grapes. <laughs> Amen. Mark, I'm looking at the top of my page. It says Mark 42, but I know in my mind I'm going to 46. So it's Mark 10, 46. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Are we there? <laughs> Amen. While we're getting ready, I got this wrote down. I just want to. Throw this out there. Psalms chapter 10 says this uh, in verse 17. It says, Lord, you have heard the desires of the humble. Uh, you have, thank you, that will prepare their hearts, that will cause thine ears uh, to hear. Lord, thou hast heard the desires of the humble, and you will prepare the hearts, that will cause your ear to hear. 
So above all things, while we're diving into this message, uh, I don't know why that, that stuck out a lot was the, the scripture about being humble. Above everything else, Cliff, that we ever do, that we have a humble spirit. Uh, Kenny, about everything else that we ever do, that we keep a humble spirit. It don't matter what we do or how far we go, how much we climb, how, how much we grow, how much we, we're like this big oak tree with plenty of fruit, plenty of, uh, stay humble above everything. Uh, it don't matter what platform, it don't matter what, what stage, it don't matter what microphone, it don't matter who. Uh, above everything else, the Bible says, the Lord has heard the desires of the humble. Uh, thou wilt prepare the heart. That will cause your ear to hear. He will cause his ear to hear the, the cry of the humble. So stay humble no matter what. Mark chapter 10 and verse 46. Very familiar passage. It's also in Luke 18. Uh, but the Bible says this. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out from Jericho with his disciples, a great number uh, of people with his disciples and a great number of people. And the Bible says, uh, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside, uh, the highway side begging. And when he heard this, when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. And he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him that, uh, and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, for he calleth thee. Ain't that a beautiful statement? Arise, because he called you. And he cast away his garment. He rose. And then he came to Jesus. That's not what we're preaching, but while I was reading it, that's a, that's a message right there. Uh, write that down. Somebody preach that later. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus uh, in the way. Now, before I get into the notes that I have and we, we just take off, uh, I, want, I want to read this. It's, it's a study side note. Uh, and, it, and this is what it says. It says, for Mark to mention him by name, this blind man must have been noted, uh, a noted person in Jericho. The name Bartimaeus comes from Bar, meaning son, and Timaeus which means poverty. But some scholars have debated this for century. If so, the blind man was the son of poverty. And he was blind and he was a beggar. And his Christ, son of David, was a call to the Jewish Messiah for attention. Beggars would cons were considered outcasts. So the people told him to be silent, but he cried out the louder for mercy for Christ. Uh, his Christ stopped Christ in his steps, and the people encouraged him uh, to stand up. Verse 50 says, He casted aside his garment. Now, this is what the study says. Each beggar was legitimately poor, and they received a special garment from the city marking him as a true beggar, a poor man. Here the blind man left his garment in the dust and demonstrated his faith that he believed he would be cured. Christ never laid hands on him, but spoke the word only. And the man received his sight. Now, now this just come while I was reading that. Oftentimes, Cliff, oftentimes, as soon as we see, and we, we teach this, we know this, but as soon as we see somebody struggling, Kim, as soon as we see somebody in a, in a, a form and a fashion that we don't think is where they need to be, we cast that garment on them. And we place that old beggar robe on them. The Bible said his name means the son of poverty, a poor man, a beggar. By the way, blind. Uh, did not have sight, what the Bible said. And that's why I want to talk about the sight part. But he did not have sight. But oftentimes, that's why I said stay humble above everything else. Oftentimes, Tyler, people don't get it right. They miss the mark. Christians miss the mark. Sinners have missed the mark. They don't, they don't disqualify them. 
Amen. Missing the mark don't disqualify you or qualify you for heaven. The, the, this, this garment that this man had on him does not or does not qualify him from, from getting healed. Doesn't qualify him or disqualify him from heaven. Uh, the only thing the Bible said was Jesus spoke the word only. And by the faith of this man, he was made whole and he received his sight. So we know by, by his faith, he was whole. But Jesus speaking the word. So put it in another perspective. Can even a sinner man. Only thing it takes is one drop of the blood for salvation. We don't have to have it figured out, Ty. It's the blood that, that has it figured out for us. When we get covered by his blood, not our righteousness. Our righteousness is, is junk. Filthy rags, the Bible says. But it's the blood of Jesus that when we get covered by his blood, then we can cast the garment aside. Then we can arise and follow him by our faith in his blood. Amen. Now, I, I want to go very quickly. I ain't got long. But I want, to, I want to touch on this. Notice that the Bible said that blind Bartimaeus, it never said not one time was his eyes closed. It said he didn't have no sight. Never once does this Bible that I just read, never once did, I, did you hear me read that this man's eyes were closed. It don't say that. It said he was blind. Amen. His eyes was open, but he still couldn't see. Though his legs were good, he still couldn't get around. Though he could physically go and touch things with his opened eyes, but he's blind. He ain't got no sight. Eyes is open, but he has no sight. He can take his hands down the wall, take his feet and walk, take his ears and go. Sometimes smell. Smell your way to the kitchen. You can smell. The other senses work, but because of one sense not working, the man's leg crippled. Because one thing that he lacked was the, the ability to see. The one thing that he lacked was the ability to have the sight to get him to where he needs to go. Evidently, he was on his way somewhere, and he just popped a, he, he sat down where he was at, and he said, it's as far as I'm going. Blind Bartimaeus by the wayside, sitting, waiting. Then he heard this man named Jesus come, and he began to cry out. So this man, he had the legs to walk and the, the hands to touch and everything every, everything else was functioning the way that it ought to function. But because of the lack of sight, it crippled him from the plans that God had for him. Because of the lack of sight, he couldn't just go uh, into the city like everybody else could go. Because of the lack of sight, he could not see where it is that he needed to go. That's simple, right? Amen. Amen. He couldn't see. He didn't have the sight to see. Where he needed to go. Amen. Regardless if he could feel, regardless if he could walk, regardless if he can hear, regardless if he could taste and smell, because of the lack of his sight, it had stumped his growth. Because of the lack of sight, it couldn't function the way that he ought to find. It stumped something in him to get him to his destiny because of his lack of sight. Amen. It never said that his eyes was closed. I'm going to say it one more time. It never said that his eyes was closed. His eyes was very much open. But he had no sight. A blind man. He had no sight. I pray God give us vision. Give us our sight. There's, there's a couple prophetic channels I want to mention tonight. When God opens the eyes of a man, when you receive the sight, the gift of sight from God, there's... There's a couple of channels that's going to be open to you. Uh, there's many more than just these two. I just want to mention two because it's lengthy. Uh, maybe this could be a study that we'll do. Because just like this blind man, many of us, our eyes ain't closed. We're very much aware of what's going on in the physical realm. But we ain't got the sight of the spiritual realm. This man's his eyes was open, but he was blinded. He said, he didn't say, Jesus, open my eyes. He said, Jesus, give me sight. He never said, Jesus, open my eyes so that I can see where I'm going. No, the Bible says, he said, give me sight that I may see. Amen. Amen. So we, we walk around, Ty. We look good. We, we can walk and feel and see. But because the, the lack of the ability of sight in the spiritual realm, it has stumped our growth for what God has for us. Because we can't see in the spiritual realm, our sight has been blinded. It's not the destiny that God has for us. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. That when we, when we dive into this, give me sight, yeah. things that's going to get awakened. 
one of the main things, one of the main reasons, and I'll go through my notes and so we won't be too long. One of the first things, uh, now listen, if this don't pertain to you, maybe some of the other steps will. Uh, but but one of the main things that you notice that when you begin to lose your spiritual sight, one of the main things you'll notice when you lose the sight of heaven, so to speak, is, is one of the first channels that gets closed, that we pray tonight that it'll get back opened in Jesus' name. It is the ability of having dreams and visions. When you don't have dreams or visions, that's a quick indicator that your spiritual sight has dimmed. Amen. When you when you no longer have the dreams of heaven and the visions that God has for us, that's a very first, one of the first quick indicators uh, that you that you've disconnected your sight. Something something's happened. And we pray God give us our sight back. Amen. You want to wake up back there. Give us our sight back. Dreams and visions. Job chapter 2, 28. We, we know the Bible says, Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men see visions. So that's a very good indicator. In the last days, I pour out my spirit. So when he pours it out and he done did, it's poured out. We'll see visions. We'll see dreams. That's one of the promises of, of Jesus, right? That's one of the promises of the Holy Spirit. So if we have the lack of, something's wrong with our spiritual vision. Amen. When a man does not have his seeing eye spiritually, when, when, you, when you're being blinded spiritually, when you don't have your, spirit, your seeing eye, you'll never be able to have the platform of dreams and visions for God to reveal the blueprints of your life for you. For it's a gift of God. Multiple times in my life, Kim, I say, God, give me the blueprints of what, what's next. Give, give me some, what's next. Show me the layout, God. And if my spiritual sight has been something's off, then it's harder for me to get the blueprints of heaven. It's harder for me to get the blueprints for this house. It's harder for me to get the blueprints because the visions ain't operating the way they ought to operate. The, the Bible never said the man's eyes was closed, but he had no sight. Amen. Give me sight, God, so that I can have the blueprints of what you would have, what ministry you would have me in. What 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 direction you would have me to flow? What what what's my purpose? What's my destiny? What value do I have, God? I need my spiritual sight to have all these things. What value does the house have? What's the house supposed to do? Are we supposed to flow prophetically? Uh, uh, in in a, in a, uh, uh, what's the word? Appalachian. Appalachian. The apostolic. Are we supposed to be apostolic house, God? Are we supposed to be a healing house or a teaching house or just a house that raises up disciples? What What is the blueprints, God, for the house? Are we supposed to just keep this one building and grow and grow and grow? Do we branch out to many buildings in different locations? What's the blueprints, God, that you would have for us? Amen. We need the vision of heaven. What ministers go where? Who, who to plug in where? What person goes to this? What? Who needs to open? Who needs to pray? Who needs to preach? Who needs to teach this? Who needs to teach this? Who needs to go out there? Who? We need the blueprints of heaven. Because without it, we'll, we'll misplug people where they don't need to be plugged in. And it'll blow up. And they're like, my God, I thought that. No, no. They're good, but that ain't where they're supposed to be. That's They're, they're good, but they ain't supposed to be plugged in there. Jennifer's supposed to be plugged in there. But you plug Cliff in. It don't work that way. So we need the blueprints of heaven. We need the vision. We need the visions of heaven. Amen. We need the sight of heaven. Would you agree with me? Give us our dreams back, God. Give us our dreams. Give us our visions again. Job chapter 33. Uh, you remember God said, For God speaks once, yea, twice, though a man perceives it not. If dreams wasn't so important, Satan will not be so interested in your dreams. For God speaks once, yea, speaks twice to men, perceives it not. God speaks once, yea, God will speak twice to men. But the issue is our spiritual sight has been demon. God's not speaking less. He's never changing. Same yesterday, today. He's never changing. He's not speaking less. He's not speaking more. He's not speaking more quiet. He's not speaking more loud. God is the same every day. But something's off. God speaks once, yea, God speaks twice. But men does not perceive it the way that God wants. Something's off. 
Give us our vision, God. Give us our sight again, God. He don't change, right? He's still speaking, right? He's still talking, but I ain't heard him. He's still showing dream. I ain't had a dream. He's still showing secrets and mystery, but I ain't had a vision. Something's off with us, not God. Right. Something's off here, not with him. He's good. Amen. Amen. Something's off here. God speaks once. Thank you, Tyler. God speaks twice. Yea, though men don't perceive it. If dreams was not already, if dreams was not so important, why do you think Satan comes at you so strongly in your dreams? If dreams was not so important, why would Satan come at you as soon as you close your eyes? He comes to fight you. Yeah. Spiritual warfare. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, that's why they say one of the most delicate times to pray is between midnight and 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. If they was not so important, Satan wouldn't come at you with every foul and wicked and nasty thought. You could be doing good all week long and I know where Pam, you got the nastiest dream. Where'd that come from? Come on, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Satan's interested in your dreams. God's also interested in your dreams, though. That's why Job 2 said that your dream and you have visions. Amen. Yeah. We halfway quoted it all the time. That, that everything I do, I don't keep it from you. It's, I don't call you a servant. I call you a friend because what I have, I give to you yeah. in dreams, visions. I speak it to you. I won't withhold nothing good from you. You remember in Genesis 41, the Bible said that God uh, was the one that gave Pharaoh the dream. God was the one that gave Pharaoh the dream to get Joseph, pretty much to get Joseph out of prison. It also says in Genesis 41 that God gave Pharaoh the dream to, 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 for everything to happen the way that it was supposed to happen. With the famine and the and all that, God was the one that gave him that dream. Yeah. Open our vision that I may see. Amen. That I may see. That I may see. <coughs> Genesis 3 and 6. Notice the fall of man come from the vision. Notice the fall of mankind came from a physical vision. But spiritually, the, the sight of Eve and the apple, the, the thought process of being like God, the thought process of the power, because of the vision that she lost with God, but gained to what the enemy told her. Because of that, things shifted, right? She lost her ability to have sight. Then she got the sight of the world. Then she said, I'm naked, right? Yeah. Something shifted within me. And I told them at the at the, the campfire, notice what's what's apostle uh, Charlie taught us this in the little church. You notice that when they when, when they done that, they lost something spiritually and obtained something in the fleshly realm. They lost the sight of heaven and, and they, they realized they was naked and began to sow on the, the fleshly the, the leaves and the twigs. So they lost their sight in the heavenly realm, but gained it in the fleshly. God give us better sight in the spiritual. Instead of the fleshly. Amen. That's the reason you, you can you can pray. You can pray in the spirit. And we do it often here. And I'm not trying to go too far in my head of myself. But you, we can pray in the spirit here. And you can look at somebody and say, hey, your whole family is going to get saved through you. We've been saying that, right? And they look at you and like, how? How can that be? Because you have the spiritual side of heaven. You ain't just a physical sight, but you have this, the ability. You're not blinded no more. Your, your sight's been open. Does that make sense? So, EJ, you can talk to James and everybody and uh, everybody being witnessing to. Uh, you can talk to them and say, hey, I can see very soon you're going to give your heart to God. Why? Because the, his sight's intact with heaven. You can talk to people and people message, I want to give my life to Jesus, sir. Do you know Jesus? And You're about to get saved. Your whole family's about to get shifted. Your whole family's going to change because of why can we say this stuff? Because in the spirit realm, you haven't lost your sight yet. You have your sight. So you can see not just you saved, not just your husband saved, not just your wife saved, but you can say generations. You can see generations saved. Yeah. 
because your sight is intact with heaven. But when we pray and you get bored in prayer before service and you get bored when we say, hey, I command my bloodline back. I command my last name back. I command generations back. I cancel curses and all this stuff off of generations. And you get bored with that. Why is it that we get bored when we pray in the heavenly realm? It's because we've been disconnected from the heavenly. And we obtain something fleshly. So we were trying to break something spiritually and pray over families and pray and pray and pray. And we got half that can see spiritually, half that can see in the spirit realm. They're, they're not blinded to it, but their eyes is very much open. So we pray and we, we prophesy and we come in covenant with what God's word says. And we break covenant with, with, with what the enemy says. And we break and we bind and we loosen. We obtain things because we can see. But you get a person that they can't see, they get bored. You get a person that can't see, they can't pray more than five minutes. You get a person that can't see the victory over their family. They get bored within 30 seconds of praying over their family because their vision and their dreams and their lack and their ability to be able to see. They're by the wayside begging. They're by the wayside begging because they heard of this Jesus that's coming by. But when we're intact with the spiritual realm and our vision and our dreams and our, our ability to see in the heavenly realm, we don't have to wait on Jesus to come by. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So he don't have to pass by. He's in us now. Now that he's in us and we, we know that we obtained something from heaven, we're tapped into him. So now we can pray over our families. Now we can break. Now we can bind. Now we can claim our generations back. Now we can claim our bloodline back, our last name back. Why, AJ? Because we can see way farther than what we're praying. Give me the ability to see. Amen. Give me the ability to see. Number two. The second channel that gets open, that gets closed, but we, we're trying to open one, one, the first one, when you pray in for vision, or when you pray that you be able to, to see spiritually into the spiritual realm, uh, is the ability to have dreams and visions. Now, the second one is this here: it's your imagination and your creativity. Your imagination and your creativity. One, of the, the the top several channels that gets open. The top two is this is that your imagination for things of heavenly things and your creativity for things of heaven will get opened back up. Once it gets closed, you'll begin to, 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 to try to work things in with your own hands. You'll begin to try to put things together with your own mind. You'll try to begin to work things together. Uh, you don't hear from heaven no more, but you're still a creative person and you're trying to use the imagination uh, that God's given you, right? But it no, it's no longer intact in the spirit realm with heaven. And because of that, we come up with some goofy stuff. It sounds good, but it's goofy. And it's not what God has for us. It's not the direction we're supposed to go in. It sounds good, but it's not for the house. It sounds good, but it's not for us. When we disconnect from him and the imagination and the creativity realm with that, some stuff that does sound good, and it may work. But it ain't what God wants. Amen. Amen. God, God has things, particular things, extraordinary things just for you, just for us, just for me, just for this house, just, just for what he's wanting us to do. But we have to be intact with him. Amen. We need our eyes to be open. The Bible says, the blind man said unto Jesus, Lord, that I may receive my sight. That I may receive my sight. That I may receive my sight. The goals and the plans to frame your destiny is a product and it's a vantage point from heaven. Amen. It's an advantage point from heaven, Kenny, when you can pray and you say, God, give me the blueprints. We just talked about it. And we can tap in and say, God, I need the imagination and the creativity to do what it is that you'd have me to do because I don't want to miss the productivity of what it is that you want me to do in this moment. Does that make sense? Because if you're not careful, you'll, you'll conjure stuff up. And you try to be something God's not called you to be. You try to work outside of the will of God and uh, outside of the spirit of God instead of in God's will and in God's spirit. And you're conjuring things up that don't need conjuring. You're doing things that don't need to be doing because you ain't got 
the, the connection to heaven yet. Does that make sense? You ain't got the connection to heaven. Your vision has been lost, cut off. Amen. Genesis 1, Genesis 11, uh, 1 through 5. I'm going to turn there. Yeah, okay. I won't be much longer. You remember this story when, I'll just read it. And the Bible says, and, and the whole earth was in one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sonor, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had one brick, had brick for stone, and, uh, and they had slime, uh, had they more for the mortar. They had slime for the mortar. And, and they said, Go, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top many reach unto the heavens, and let us make uh, us a name, lest we be scattered abroad into the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. The creativity, the imagination, it wasn't there yet, Kenny. They didn't they didn't have they didn't see it. They didn't it wasn't the blueprint wasn't there. Nobody else had done it like this before. You understand? Nobody's done it the way that they're about to do it. It sounded insanity to anybody else, but they had that creativity and the imagination that God had for them. That house that they, they was in, that people, that, that, that region, God had a purpose for them. And they had tapped into something taller in the spirit realm. And they said, God, give me the ability, give me the creativity and the imagination to build what it is that you'd have me to build. So they'd take the brick and they would make it and they would take slime, use it as mortar and build something so great that the Bible said God would come down to see it. God give us the, the sight that we build something so great that God would just want to come down and see it. Does this make sense? That God would want to come down and see it. Amen. I want you to know also that what we're talking about, the creativity uh, and, and, and the imagination of this, this is where that your messages come from to preach the gospel. That if you ever find yourself in a place that you're burnt out, you ain't getting nothing, no messages, no no thing, no, no, no literature from the Word of God, nothing to be able to minister with. A very good indicator that your spiritual sight's gone. Yeah. Very quickly, it should be now, you know, Something's wrong with my spiritual sight because I'm not getting messages like I used to. I'm not hearing from heaven the way that I used to to give somebody something from heaven. Setting their blind, by the way. I can move. I can walk. I can feel. I can smell. I can hear. Everything that's, I can hear the happiness of everybody else. My eyes is open, but I'm blinded. Amen. You ever seen a blind person with their eyes open? Looks like a a film, dark cloud. God, remove the cloud off of our eyes that we may see. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove that dark cloud. Remove that film. Remove that, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Remove that off of our eyes, God, that we may see. Remove that. Remove the scales off of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us not be like this man by the wayside, God, begging because we lost our sight along the way. Maybe we started good, but now we have no vision. Maybe we started on fire, but now we lost our sight. Remove the scales off of our eyes, God. Give us our vision back that we may be able to see the things of heaven, that my dreams return unto me, that my visions return unto me, that my creativity and my imagination for things above would return in the name of Jesus that I may be able to see and not conjure something up in the flesh realm. Not, not conjure things up in the flesh realm because everybody else is doing it and it sounds good. And it's not by far from what God has for us. Amen. What God has for you. Let us not conjure stuff up that don't need to be. Amen. I want to shift from this message real quick and go to something else very quickly and I'm done. I told you it's short, very short. 
And maybe, maybe Lord willing, we'll, we'll go on deeper with the divisions, uh, the seed, rather, the, the 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 ability to have our sight back. Amen. A lot. I've heard so much in the past week or so. So much with these questions of, this is what people. This is what I got wrote down. What do we know about Jesus? Now, this is questions people ask me. What do we know about the Holy Spirit? Now, this is individually. Now, if somebody was to ask you these questions on the spot and you was by yourself, you answer them. What do you know about the Holy Spirit? What do you know about Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? What do you know about His blood? What do you know about His Word? What do you know about this church that you attend? What do you know about the brothers and sisters that's sitting beside you? What do you know about finances? Now this is just questions because oftentimes, EJ, we get put on the spot. Who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Spirit? Bless you. What is his blood? How does his blood work for us? What, what's this church about? What, if somebody wants to ask you stuff, could you answer what Upon the Rock Ministries church is about? Can, could you, can you go into depth detail about what the blood of Jesus represents and what it does? When we pray the blood over us or plead the blood or just come in covenant with his blood, can we go into detail about it? This is the hard part. You ready? If we can't answer that wholeheartedly, 100% correctly, the right way, what are we doing to change it? What are we doing to change it? If we can't answer all them questions, even about finances, even about this house, even about each other, even about the blood and, and the church and, uh, and the Bible and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God the Father, if we can't answer all of it, what are we doing about it? Do we choose to stay in a state of ignorancy? Because when much is more is known, more is required. Do we choose to purposely stay in a state of I just stay ignorant, or are or, or we, or we, will we choose to say, you know what? Regardless, I'll come. I'll sit in class to learn. I don't care what it feels like or what it sounds like. I'll come and sit in class, church, to learn about it. See, it's unfair time when, when somebody comes and, and looks at you as a representation of Jesus Christ and say, hey, what does the blood mean? And you're like, ah, I've been saved for five years. I still don't know. What are we doing to change it, though? Are we coming to class? Are we coming and attentive to, to the discipleship class that God has for us? Yeah. Are we taking time to, to pull back off of the Internet and off of the world and tapping back into His Word? Are we pulling back from everything fleshly, tapping into the spirit realm? See, I don't know nothing about vision. What are we doing to change it? I don't know nothing about getting my sight back, God. What are we doing to change it? And here's the issue. Please have mercy. Give me grace. But here's the issue. When we choose to just so half-heartedly miss the services that God has for us, now all of the people that's not here tonight will come next week and say, hey, I wish that I had vision again. I wish that I, my blindness would go away. And we could say, you know what? If you would come and sit in class. You would have been taught how to receive your vision again. If you would have just come sit in class. Amen. I'm not beating nobody up know what life happens. But what I'm saying is it's unfair to the house when we pour out and pour out and say, hey, I beg you to come to class. I beg you to learn the word. I beg you to come in covenant with the blood of Jesus. What is covenant? I've never heard that. We have to come to class. This makes sense. I wish that I had my sight back, God. Give me my sight back, God. My sight to what? My sight to want to pray again. My sight to what? My sight to want to march, take back territories again. My sight to be able to go pray, proclaim the gospel. My sight, listen, when I ain't got dreams, I ain't got visions, something's missing in the flow of the heavens in my life. The visions ain't here, the dreams ain't here, Keith. The house. Does that make sense? Let me take it a step farther. You consider yourself a leader. I'm saying, I'm picking on this house. We're leader of this house. Shame on us. If we've lost our vision, we've lost our sight. 
We've lost our creativity. And I know it's hard. So I love you. You know I love you. And we've lost our imagination. But God would have for us to build something so pleasing unto Him. Just like in the book of Genesis, how that He, Katie, would come down from heaven and say, My God, what's my children building? Look at this thing. Look how immaculate. Look how wonderful. Look how uh, just, just great this thing is that they're building. And it all comes time from this place. This man, Blind Bartimaeus, done put the robe on him, done put the, and he's, they done pushed him to the side. And I'm here to tell you, you leave this area, and you mentioned McDowell County people pushed this area to the side. They've done put the garment on us. But I say in the name of Jesus that we arise by our faith and say, God, give me my sight back, that I will rise, lay my garment to the side, and I'll follow after you with everything that I have. And I might not be able to see now. That's okay. Everybody, else, listen, we come and covenant with people. We come and covenant with others that can see, that will lead us along the way. We don't come and covenant with those that's lost vision. Because if we do, the Bible says that the blind will leave the blind and they would both fall in the ditch. They would both fall away. But we come and come and equip with people that has their vision, that has their dreams, that has not lost anything. They're still connected to heaven. Let me lean on you till I get my visions back. Let me lean on you till I receive my sight again. Oh, that I receive my sight again. I'm going to tell you a weird story. I preached Sunday in Illinois and we went out to eat. Give me mercy right here. We went out to eat and we I went to the bathroom and was going, you know, wash my hands. But I walked in, this older man was, was sitting there uh waiting in line and, and he said, You part of that party back there, you old guy. And he's like, You part of that party over there making all that noise? And I was like, Yes, sir. He said, what are y'all doing? Now, listen, we got an accent. I don't know if you guys know or not, but we have accents. And I didn't. You go to Illinois, they can tell you you got an accent. <laughs> Cliff's car. <laughs> That's his hometown. In, anyways, uh, it really is his hometown. That's, that's what's wild. And don't God do great, mighty things? We go and minister to our sister church from his hometown. And he didn't even know it before we even. Anyways. But he, he said, what are y'all doing? I said, I told him my story. And I said, hey, man, I said, and, uh, we have a church in uh, McDowell County, West Virginia. And uh, we come up here to minister. And uh, he asked me about the coal mines. And he said, you're a miner. And I said, no, sir. I'm, you know, I've been full-time ministry for three years now. And he started crying. And he said, can you come to my table? And I'm like, yeah. And he said, can you come to my table and talk to these? I said, yes, sir. So I went around my feet and washed my hands, come out. And uh, I went to his table, and there's this round table. I come find out it's Baptist and, 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 and uh, uh, whatever, Methodist and Pentecostal, and there's just a whole bunch of them. And, and they told me after I got them talking, they're just a bunch of people that love Jesus that come together to, to try to get Trump back in office. They said, we're just, we're a Trump rally. We're going from town to town talking about Trump. I said, you're my people. <laughs> Don't. Anyways, that's what they said. I'm not. Don't stone me. But but anyways, uh, that I was just telling my story and stuff, and they were so intrigued with what God's doing. He's like, "Can I have your information?" He's, he's like, "I want to get in touch with you and all that." And uh, he said, "Where are you at?" And I said, "McDowell County." I said all this to say the garment that people's placed on us, and, and it's. And he said, "How many people's?" I said, "I think if you Google it, it says the town of Bradshaw has 80 people. It's something like that." And uh, it's considered the most poorest county in the world, uh, literally. And uh, we was talking, and he just could see the love. He could feel the excitement. And uh, one thing led to another. You know, we, we was talking. We went from talking about the poorest county to the most county. If that's even how you say that. The most place with the most love of God from people is in this area. And, and we just talked for a, a long time. And we shifted from being the poorest to now we're talking about how much love's coming out of this place, how much God's doing in this place, how much people ha has allowed God to pick them up, remove that blanket off of them, and receive their sight for things of the heaven. For I don't know if you know this or not, but but and I know that it's few in number. That's okay. I don't. We ain't moved by numbers. Uh, but this little people here is going out everywhere. 
There's many people everywhere that, that reaches out. A, a lot of different places, Alabama, Illinois, North Carolina, South Carolina, in, in, in just excited with what God's doing here. And they want to team up. They want to be a part. They, because they see the love and they see the zeal of the Lord upon this region. Now, I don't know if you, maybe you don't get out enough to, to realize this. Maybe you're in the oppression and the battle so much, but sometimes you may need to pull back and just look and see what, what it is that God's doing. That there is a generation that's raising up, that God has raised up, that's laying aside every form of wickedness. Not saying that you're perfect, but that you're, you're, you're laying aside every form uh, of ungodliness. And uh, their eyes have been opened again to this region and what it is that God's doing. The sight has been returned to a lot of people. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I just want to encourage you. If you've lost your vision, you've lost your sight, that's okay. Repent for whatever it was. Get your sin under the blood and lock yourself away in that place called prayer again. Yes. Amen. Lock yourself away in that place called prayer again. Yes. Amen. Amen. And get your vision back. Get your dreams back. Get your creativity for heavenly things back. Amen. For when we do membership meetings and we list all these things that we want to do, it's not from a place of fleshly desires. It's a place of spiritual tapped into heaven. This is what I feel like God's wanting us to do. This is what I feel like, that's what I feel like God's wanting us to do. All these things we talk about, it's because we're tapped in. Amen. If you're not tapped in, it's okay. Listen to me. That's why we need each other. That's why we need church. That's why we need classes. That's why we need this cliff. Because I don't know how to get my sight back. This man didn't either. The only thing the Bible said is by his faith in Jesus to give me my sight. He said, what do you need me to do for you, man? He didn't say open my eyes. Give me my sight. He never said, pick me up, remove this garment, put me, make me whatever. No, he said, give me my sight. For a person, listen to me, for a person that has sight, man or woman, it don't matter. You have sight in the heavenlies. You'll jump leaps and bounds versus somebody that does not. I don't care if they've been saved 50 years and you've been saved five months. You connect to the heavens. Receive the sight of heaven. Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. And we tie back into heaven. That we're not persuaded, you hear me, by what our mind says. We're not persuaded by what our husband says. We're not persuaded by what our wife says. We're not persuaded by what our neighbor says. We're not persuaded by the person that's sitting beside of us in the church, beside of us, what they say. We're not persuaded what any other church says. We're not persuaded what any person on the street says. Nobody persuades us by heaven. So we tap back in. Jesus, give me my sight back. Give me my vision back that I may see. That I may see. We stand to our feet. Can you come up here and play something pretty? How many receives this word tonight? Yes. With your arms stretched to heaven, how many want your visions back? Yes. How many want your dreams back? Yes. Change it up. Keep, hang on. You play that song again, and, and you just worship with us. I don't want to take it from you. It's that our hands are right, our heart, our posture is right. Now listen, if you're here and you're lost, don't leave lost. The, the, this blood's for you. And, and it, the heaven has a celebration for you waiting. These altars is open. Don't leave here. There's men and women that wants to love on you. I don't know nobody's heart. I don't know my mama's heart. You can, you can turn it off. I don't know my mama's heart. I don't know my daddy's heart. I don't know 